Pushing my boundaries has changed my life. Now I'm on a mission to help five people change theirs. I'm Ben Fogel, and this is Extreme Dreams. Ah, bueno. Each week, I'll lead my team of would-be explorers on the trip of their lives as we pit ourselves against the world's most extreme environments. No breath at all. My heart's banging. We'll be pushed to our physical limits and emotions will run high. And how Just the hell would we have found you, to be quite honest? I'll sit there laughing. Oh, and for those who rise to the challenge, life will never be the same again. <laughs> this week, we're trekking through the Andes Mountains of Peru in South America. Following a route that only a hundred people have travelled in the last century, we're trying to reach the amazing lost city of the Incas, Choquiquerao. This week's team are single mum Shelley Guilfoyle, who's got high hopes for this trip. I think it could change my life. I want it to change my life. Call centre worker Francesca Townsend, who wants to prove she can get on with other people. If I change what's going on, that's fine. <laughs> if other people change it, I don't like that. Perfectionist Mark Adams wants to let his hair down. I want more out of life. Why not challenge yourself? Why not take a few risks? 40-year-old Mia Newbury wants a chance to get away from the domestic grind. All these dreams and aspirations you might have had for yourself, kind of, you know, you lose it after a while. And the oldest member of the team, Howard Levy, wants to show he can keep up with the youngsters. I am 55, but I am reasonably fit. I don't smoke, I don't drink, so everything's going for me there. All five want to prove themselves on Extreme Dreams. Previously on Extreme Dreams, we're not even halfway through the journey to the lost city of the Incas, but already my team have been tested to their limits. We've had to cross the raging waters of the Urubamba River. It was a white-knuckle ride for single mum Shelley, who's terrified of heights. I don't like none of that. Then we faced a long uphill hike into the wilderness, which was almost too much for Brighton girl Francesca. I can barely breathe. I can't do it. <laughs> and Yorkshireman Howard. Every time we turn a corner, there's another massive hill to climb. But we battled on against the rough terrain and ravages of altitude sickness to conquer a 5,000-metre mountain with the most extraordinary views. If my dad, God rest his soul, was alive today, he'd be very proud. But our ordeal wasn't over yet. Just don't look. The descent down the other side paralysed Shelley with fear. She's hysterical with fear right now. We're all scared. And later, we discovered one of the team was nowhere to be found. Mia! 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 Oh. Mia's been missing for over an hour now, and everyone's getting worried. We've made the gut-wrenching decision to move on from where we last saw her. We're desperately hoping she's at the spot where we're meant to meet our guide, Pepe. It was really irresponsible of Mia. There was a lot of other people there, and we were a team, and we were a family. And if she'd have been in our position, worrying about somebody, she'd have felt the same and it was really a very upsetting time. Mia! Mia! We were kind of yelling and, and looking, but no response. And that's when the panic started setting in, and I thought, what the hell are we going to do? If, what happens if we do walk back to the camp and Mia's not there? We've just left her. And you couldn't help but think, if she tripped or fell or were there animals that could do her any harm? All of those sorts of things came into play. I felt scared for her. Coming down through the rocks, we finally catch sight of her. Mia hasn't fallen into a ravine. She hasn't been attacked by wild animals. She's been doing a spot of bird watching. I thought we had to wander off alone and look for birds. Yeah, but I walk over here. Well, I We've think... been sitting here for an hour. We've just We're been sitting and waiting for you. Where did you go? I think we need to probably sit down and work out what we're going to do in this situation. Please don't walk off again, because we were generally worried about you. I was really angry at her. At the time, I thought she was really irresponsible, and I thought I just felt the whole attitude was a bit childish. 
First yeah. concern was your welfare. I've got yeah. nothing else. Worried to death about you. Even when we found her and told her what we thought, she wasn't that perturbed. In a strange forest with horrible insects and all sorts can go wrong, we were worried, you know, we're a team. You know what to expect. I'm a survivor. She couldn't see what all the fuss was about. She said, don't worry, she says, I'm a, I'm a survivor, I'm a loner. She is in your back garden, but not in a strange place. And it, yes, that was one of the very worrying times of the trek. And how the hell would we have found you, to be quite honest? I'll we'll sit there laughing. I'll we'll make some noise if there was any problems. Get All you have to, to say is, look, I'm going ahead, don't panic. Yeah. If you don't find me, I know where we're going. I'll and explain to you the room, right. and, we'll and then you. it's clear. I don't worry about you, don't worry about me. Like you would once again, Mia's broken one of the cardinal rules of trekking in the wilderness. You never leave the group, because if you do, you put everyone at risk. At this stage in our journey, a full-blown row could tear the group apart. Mia's defiant attitude just isn't building bridges, so I step in. How are you doing? You had everyone pretty worried there. Mm, seems I did. Yeah. yeah. Do you think they'd be that worried? No. I haven't got any inkling that, that they would be worried about me at all, no. Why not? Well, because I don't think we gel. I think we... What's the opposite of gel? Grind. She, she is acting a bit like an irresponsible child, just walking off on her own, not telling her where she's going. Any decent adult would know that when you're in the middle of Peru, you know where you are, you're going to tell someone where, you, where you're going. And I have no idea what snakes they have here, but to turn around and say I'd shout if I got bitten by one, I mean, what a ridiculous thing to say. <laughs> so I suppose the big question is we've got quite a few more days we're, we're out trekking, you know, we're, we're probably about a quarter of the way there. What now? Yeah, I can't wait, you know. No, but in terms of the group. Oh. <laughs> um, well, yeah, this might bring us a little bit closer, you know. I understand that they um, care about me a bit more, you know. Do you can reciprocate that? Or we'll try to? Yeah, yeah. All right, come on. Should we go on, guys? Yep. yep. Am I forgiven? It's nothing like... Just put it down to... Forget it, let's go You live and you love. Okay, go. We just have to move on, but tension in the group is still simmering. Understandably, I think everyone's a bit let down, really. They, they all came here as part of... The, they wanted to form a group and, you know, get to, get to meet people they wouldn't necessarily normally meet. And, and Mia obviously has her very set ideas of what she wants from here and it's independence. So you can probably see if she's already way ahead of the group, even though Mark really wanted her to walk with us, but she's already steamed ahead, so... I don't know, it's not, not great at this early stage in the, in the trip, but it's something that, you know, we as a group, I suppose, have to, have to deal with. Better catch up. Don't want to be accused of running away. Today is day five of our journey to Chokikerao. We've got to cross eight miles of some of the most inhospitable terrain in the world to reach our next camp at Yanomar village. If we make it, we'll be halfway to our goal to find the lost city of the Incas. Pepe, our guide, has been ahead to check the path. He's come back for us and he doesn't look happy. We will arrive to camp very late. I hope you have your, your flashlights, your torches with you. We have to keep on moving a little bit faster. All right. Yep. OK. Right, so seven miles to go. We'd better get on with it. Well done. Now on to that next one. Two hours later, and the steep terrain and blistering pace are really taking their toll on the group. We stop for yet another breather. This is a killer. This is worse than yesterday. All having breathing difficulties and everything. So now, I think we should just slow down. And Harold's really feeling, I feel so sorry for him. You can't keep up with the others at all. I shouldn't try, Harold. Hello. That's why you've done yourself in. Luckily, Ben's carried all my gear. Otherwise, I don't know what I'd have done. Pepe predicted 10 o'clock tonight. I predict probably midnight at this rate. And, um, and I do fear that Howard's really, really feeling it. I'm actually a bit concerned about him, which is why I'm always staying at the back, just keeping, keeping check. We struggle onwards. 
but the punishing terrain is pushing Howard to his limit. I've never done anything in my life as difficult for me as this. Balance was my biggest problem, and it bothered me intensely that I wasn't going to keep up the, the, the pace. I couldn't do it quickly, just couldn't do it. The end of this pass is just up there. All his weight appeared to be on the sticks. Without the sticks, I'm not quite sure. You know, he just would have fallen straight forward, I'm sure. Have a little break. Sit on that. We can sit on that wall. Just, just perch yourself on here. I think his knees are playing up, and I think that's the first time I thought to myself is how we're going to be right for the next day, next day of walking. Oh, looks like. Some water? Yeah, thanks. Just me knee that's. It's like putting a hot red poker on it. Although you can see somebody in trouble, you perhaps don't always appreciate just how much it's killing them to do something. It's an adventure, oh, but I don't want to put myself through tremendous pain physically. Mentally, I'll do it, but... Well, you have to look at the big picture as well, don't you? Yeah. We have many days left, so... That's right. I just don't want to get back... Well, I, wouldn't, I don't think I'd make it with this knee tonight. Mm -hmm. I really don't. It's, it's just like someone's putting a needle through it. One side of my heart, I was proud to be involved in such a wonderful expedition. The other side of me, how many days can I torture my body like this? It's obvious that Howard has reached crisis point. Something drastic has got to be done. I decide that the only way we're going to get to camp at all is to get Howard onto one of our emergency pack mules. When he got on the mule, I felt, I felt a bit sad, sorry for him, because he probably felt a bit... He let the group down. I know it's going to be hard on everybody, but after Howard, that must have been well hard for him, especially because he's a man, especially because he was the first one out of the group to get put on a mule. With Howard on a mule, we finally pick up the pace and make it to camp as night falls. But the day has been tinged with sadness. For Howard, as a proud Yorkshireman, admitting he needed help was a bitter pill to swallow. This was my worst nightmare. The rest of the team performed superb, and I've let them down, I feel. But I just couldn't go on any further. My knee was swelling up. How am I going to go on tomorrow? Uh, I only hope that they'll understand that if I can't walk, I've just got to stop. But every cloud has a silver lining, and Howard's troubles seem to have finally united the rest of the team. You great, and I heard you earlier on saying that you'd let down the team, and really, we all just said a minute ago, we were like, I can't believe you just said that. You haven't let well, us no, down it, even it, a tiny bit. It's so frustrating, I know I'm quite a bit older, but when I see you walking ahead, not, and you're not going a fantastic, I can't keep up. <laughs> Look, I'm you turned up, up. Why can't I? You turned up less than five minutes after. I don't really yeah. drink. That's and that's that's you can't be the oldest like one on the team, yeah. haven't you? Yeah. I am, yeah, I'm yeah. 55, but I don't feel it. I've found, I've found it hard on occasions, but I think more than physically, I've actually found it mentally. The willpower you need yeah. to yeah, keep yourself you've going. Got it. You've had the nail on the head. Harder than I actually it is, thought it would be. Because sometimes you just want to sit down on a rock, don't you? Just yeah, go, you think, yeah, right, I'm not a celebrity, up. but get me the hell out of here. <laughs> well, the end of another eventful day out in the middle of Peru. We've been out for days now, and for the team behind me, things just seem to be getting harder rather than easier. We've had everything today arguments, not to mention the uphill struggles and the long trek. Each person's strength and weakness is really starting to show now, but we still have a very, very long way ahead of us. Still to come on the fourth leg of our journey to find the lost city of the Incas. Horses provide welcome relief for Howard, but one man's rescue pony is another girl's nightmare ride. It's like I used to be scared of walking, and now I'm even more scared on top of a donkey. Howard faces a difficult decision. Got away up the pros and cons. If I go back, at least I know I'm going to go back in one piece. And Francesca blows a fuse. Do please stop filming me. I will smash that at your face. Ahead of us today is a 3,000-foot climb up a precipitous trail carved through the cliffs of the San Juan Pass. It's another eight-hour trek over 12 kilometres, but the tiny path snakes round towering cliffs and has drops that are enough to make your head spin. Well, we've got a new stage of the trip now. We're going to get on horseback for a couple of hours um, because the terrain is very steep and um, we're running behind time a little bit. It's the first time I've seen Howard with a smile on his face for days. 
I grabbed it and put my arms round and nobody would have prized that horse away from me. And I never thought I'd be so happy to sit on a horse. That was a wonderful feeling. But for Shelley, who suffers from vertigo... I feel sick. Even sitting on the back of a donkey trust, is an ordeal. Just trust your donkey. <laughs> I didn't even get given a milk or given a donkey. And it literally looked like the one out of Shrek. So I was like, oh my God. It's like I used to be scared of walking on the mountainside. Now I'm even more scared on top of a donkey, on top of the mountainside. I just feel sick all the time. I feel like I'm going to get a panic attack all the time. It's not like I control it. I feel like I'm not controlled, like I can't control things. Oh, I just feel really bad. Unfortunately for Shelley, this path is steep, high and incredibly narrow. And it's getting steeper, higher and narrower by the second. Oh, I can't do this today. I'm walking. Put your feet forward so you're resting oh, in your God, spirit. Oh, my God, I want to get off. It's all right. To make matters worse, the weather's closing in on us. Visibility is extremely poor, but you don't need to see it to know that inches away, the mountainside plunges thousands of feet down. You could die if you went one millimetre too far to the right. Um, and there were, you, you weren't going to survive. And let's face it, even if you survived and you were at the bottom with all your bones broken, you're going to have died by the time they get help to you because you're in the middle of absolutely nowhere. What a morning. This is what we call extreme horse riding. You can probably see the drop below is about a 1,000 feet, probably, and that's not even the, the depth of it. Over there, it's even further. We've dismounted the horses so that we can continue on foot until it's safe to get back on them. But um, we obviously have a very steep down to come, and I think all of the team are, are feeling pretty nervous about it all. I hate this. I'm so scared, and every day just gets getting worse and worse for me. My, oh, just, this is just terrible. My foot got caught in a big, massive tree. My donkey shit off. My leg was caught back. Made all the other horses want to go faster. Then the steer got ripped off the donkey. And then on top of that, it's on, all on top of a mountainside. For anyone that has a, a fear of heights like she does, this is your worst nightmare. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not particularly worried about heights as I'm standing close to the edge, but I have to say there's been a few times when I've just, my heart has gone into my mouth and I've just thought, I can't believe we're doing this. I'll just walk here just so that... I'm not near the edge. Mm, I'm not near the edge, don't worry. Shelley's happier back on two feet, but for Howard, the pain he's feeling struggling over this rocky path is obvious. The situation with Howard is once again critical. We're almost halfway through our journey, and Pepe, our guide, knows that it's only going to get harder, not easier. We're in the point of no return. So uh, one way or another, he has to walk down. The horses are not going to be able to... Uh, to uh, carry him down because it is even dangerous for them to get down. Despite being in constant pain, Howard's determined to soldier on. I'm worried, yeah, of course I'm worried. I'm worried about my health and my knee. But to go back four days is just, it, no, I can't do that. In my heart and in my mind, I'm willing. It's my leg, but I've got to do it. To make matters worse, the never-ending rain has turned the path into a quagmire. That trail was so dangerous for everybody, let alone me, who was weak at the knees. The mud was like glue. You've no, no idea of the physical and mental torture. So just to let you know what Howard has ahead of him, see the little peak above the clouds there? That's what we have to cross. The weather has deteriorated further, and with visibility down to just a few feet, we stop for a break. But for Howard, it's no longer a matter of a few minutes rest. At this point, it just looked like his eyes were him, but everything else was just completely foreign, and it was just, he was pale and obviously absolutely, totally exhausted. 
It's clear to us all that Howard won't be able to keep going at this pace and in these conditions unaided. Now my concern is for Howard. He went on a one of the, the, the ponies yesterday, one of the horses. Yes. What, what are the chances of him continuing on one? Uh, no, no way. No way. It would be too dangerous. As you probably saw already a couple of mules falling off the trail. And uh, if he would be on a horse and that happens, I mean... Because the horses, they haven't actually fallen over, but they've lost their footing. And exactly. I suppose if there was someone on it, yes, that would yes. be it over the side. And what and about tomorrow? It's going to be the same. I and mean, the next day? I mean, no, so, so from no, here and on? And the next day. From here on until we reach Chokigirao's, it won't be possible to ride a horse. If he can, can't can really continue, uh, we, wouldn't, we, we have to send him back. Hey, Howard. How are you doing? This is going to be devastating for Howard. Yeah. Perhaps the difficult news for you is that that is it, basically, for horses until we reach the ruins. Right. In the end, his choice is clear. He's either got to give in now and ride back to civilization, or keep going with us on foot. I really diddidn't know what to do. It was a terrible decision to have to make. It was almost a life and death decision. Pepe's warned me that we're still a long way from our next camp. The question is, can Howard keep going? So I've got to weigh up the pros and cons. If I go back, at least I know I'm going to go back in one piece. I have not enjoyed one little bit of the last 24 hours. Mm. It's just been absolute purgatory. It's not a pleasure to me. No. The scenery was, the company is, the whole the adventure. I thought, but well, look at you. You better to be ill with all of us and ill on your own in a donkey in the middle of nowhere. I think it was that day he said that if, if I was his daughter, he would have been proud of me. And I thought, that's like one of the nicest things that anyone's ever said to me. And I was like, you can't go now. <laughs> it's like, you've got to stay with us and finish it with us. And I, I was really upset that he was thinking about leaving. If you're not going so far today, because I've currently yeah, been I flooded, so yeah. maybe just go to that bit and then see how you feel tomorrow. Yeah, but what you must remember is that for every down he goes, yeah, it's, it's, it's even further away from, from Cusco. Yeah. OK, we'll do it. Thank yeah. you for your concern. And we'll go for it. Okay. I'm wondered upwards. It was worth it just for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brave decision, but I can't help feeling uneasy. Every step Howard makes takes him further away from civilization and medical help. But when the clouds suddenly lift, it all seems worth it. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. It is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> the land of the Incas is beautiful by daylight, but as darkness falls, the mountains seem much more threatening. We've already been walking for nine and a half hours, and there's still no sight of our next camp. <sighs> Treks and adventures really are about highs and lows. And boy, have the team had them today, both metaphorically and physically, from the highest peaks to these mud-strewn valleys that we're, we're trudging through now with thick, gloopy, smelly mud that's sticking to our bodies. The team have done fantastically well. Francesca, with her rucksack full of mini skirts, hasn't complained once. And Howard, who at one point looked like he was going to give up, has forged ahead. The team really have done well in what I would argue was a really, really difficult afternoon. And um, we're all looking forward to camp. Pepe has sent the mules and porters ahead to make camp, but his estimated 40-minute arrival time has been and gone, and there's still no sign of life ahead of us. Once again, visibility is becoming an issue on already perilous paths. The group start to separate out, Pepe and Mia are once again in the lead. I stay at the back to make sure Howard's OK, and Francesca, Mark and Shelley are somewhere in the middle. We're all looking for the elusive lights of our campsite and home. The road started getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so we're like one foot in front of the other, otherwise you're going to go in. You had to make a conscious effort not to think about what was to your left, because in the dark, you weren't going to see branches, you weren't going to see anything to grab hold of. And we kept talking to each other about life, you know, family and things like that, to keep our minds off it. And at one point, the three of us said the Lord's Prayer. 
<laughs> we all just started joining in. And that was a bit scary. There was loads of not really religious people start praying. You kind of think you're a little bit in trouble then. I think this isn't going to end very well. We trek in complete darkness for another two hours, and when we finally reach camp, tempers snap. That was such a thing to do. Please stop filming me, I will smash that at your face. As we'd approached the camp, your mood improves, you get better. And I think really the, um, the fact that we had got to camp, the relief that she must have felt, as well as the fear that she would have felt while we were walking, because we all did, I, I think it just, it was the only way she was going to get rid of it all, and, and she just totally, totally went for it. Stuck on the side of a mountain, it was dark, and I'd had such a dark... I'd been in my own little bubble all day anyway, and I just got really, really annoyed. I'm still quite stressed out now, actually. I probably won't sleep, I haven't eaten or anything. But, yeah, I haven't had a very good day. And last to arrive into camp is Howard. At one point today, he nearly turned back, but bravely struggled on. Well done. Give me a hug. Thanks. Well that, done. Man. Well done. You did brilliantly. It was down to you. No. Glad to see you alive. <sighs> Howard's uneasy on his feet, but at least there's a warm drink waiting for us. Thoughts on. And how is Francesca? No. Um, not impressed. <laughs> And that's probably being kind. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is a trek and, a, 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 and an expedition is full of the unknown and you can't necessarily plan. When you're this far out in the wilderness, things can and do go wrong. The combination of losing Mia and Howard's physical battle have really taken their toll on the team today. It's been, a, it's been an incredibly long, long day for everyone and a pretty terrifying ending, really. You know, I've been on a lot of big trips in my life and that's... It's very few occasions when you're stuck up a mountain uh, with just a little torch, not really knowing where you're going. And we had that for many, many hours, so very hairy ending, yeah. 